actually did my first NDA thing without you last week when yeah. I went to Toronto, <laughs> which was like a big step. But I really do, I really do enjoy it, and I do love, you know, watching um, the impact that the uh, the youth on this continent are getting by the different basketball camps that are having. And I'm sure football's exactly the same, right? There's lots of, you know, football initiatives across the continent. Yeah, that, you know, um, you have, like, obviously Kenya have only ever had Victor playing in the Premier League, but, you know, Nigeria and Ghana and Cameroon, they've had, they've had players in the Premier League for years and years and years. And those are the same players who go back home and run camps and run scouting uh, programs and run coaching clinics to improve the standard of their game. It's why, it's why Nigeria, uh, Ghana and Cameroon, uh, they are so far ahead of us in, is that they've had those players who can go abroad, learn from the best, but then they always bring it back home. And that's such an important thing to do is, and something that I think maybe it's a common trait amongst African players is that always that desire, no matter what the sport is, you know, hockey players playing abroad, they always want to come home to pass on that knowledge and improve the quality of our, our own game. Yeah, I think, I think I mean, we were actually, actually discussing that in Toronto. I think you know, a number of the players have started from such a low base and they're so appreciative of where they've got to that they never actually forget and where they come from to, and always want to come back. And have, I think back. that's just, that's just amazing because if you look at other, other countries, I don't think it's as, it's as common as that. I think if they get to a certain level, then they've, got, they've arrived. They've, they've arrived and that's it. And I think it's, I don't know, there's something about, there's something about maybe African culture or whatever, but there's such a strong desire that, you know, you can never forget where you came from. You can never forget where home is. And if you don't leave your home in a better place than when you turned up, there's, there's no point in doing it. You know, it's all well and good yourself going on and being a superstar, but if you can't make the next superstar... And bringing along the bring people along, with yeah. you. You know, I'm, I'm sure if you go in and ask Serge, uh, Serge Ibaka or Luol, if they don't find the next Serge, the next Luol, the next Victor Wanyama, they haven't done their job. Well, I think Masai kind of put it quite clearly when he said, you know, recently that it actually, until he can find the next Maasai, then he doesn't feel that he's accomplished, which, exactly. which, is, which, is, which is great, because it's always, it's always encouraging people to, to move forward. Yeah. So, that, so that's really great. And I know Victor has been such a um, great mentor to you, well, a friend, yeah. more than anything. When you went to Southampton, he was just... Yeah, when I went to Southampton, Victor was absolutely amazing. He's the only other Kenyan I knew in Southampton at the time, um, and kind of looked after me, treated me like a little brother. Um, I went to in, in spite of his face being all over the billboards in Southampton and being very famous. Being very famous, being well loved in Southampton uh, at, the, at the time. Um, not the most popular player now that he's gone to Tottenham. <laughs> but, you know, he's an amazing guy to me. Um, I, my first year of uni, my first two years at uni when he was in Southampton, really, like he helped me, helped me along so much, helped me settle down into a new country. Um, in the horrible weather of the, of the UK. Cooked for you? Cooked for me a couple, more, than, more than a couple Ugali. of times, yeah. Uh, just treat me like family. and. Um, you know, gave me tickets to games and stuff like that. I, um, I, yeah, I owe Victor a lot. He really did help me in settling into the UK and just dealing with, you know, being in a new country, being away from home. A bit, it felt like a bit of home was, was there in Southampton. Yeah, well, you know what? Victor is a really incredible guy and I'm just so proud of everything that he's achieved. Um, but I do think, you know, what you said is so important is that while we, you know, while it's great that, you know, people re reach that level, we do need to look at you know what's happened to the other people that Victor played with, and actually probably place some focus on them to make sure that they're getting the support, even if they can't be the next Victor, that they can actually contribute to sport in a meaningful way in this country. Yeah, exactly, and it's it, it even it's not even just sports. You know, I think when you play sports at a young age, and you know if you take it seriously, it teaches you so much more than just the sport. You know, I played team sports from when I was eight. Um, and I think a lot of my personality is shaped by the fact that I've been on teams and that I've, you know, had to deal with different people's personalities and learn the importance of teamwork and, you know, a collective goal. And so even if I didn't, wasn't going into sports, I think whatever I went into that wasn't sports, even if it was astrophysics, a lot of the lessons and a lot of my personality does come from the fact that I played sports throughout my entire childhood. And I was, I, you know, very lucky that I had two parents who, you know, encouraged me. You know, my dad, dad was at every single game for years and years and years. Like, I think the first time dad didn't come to a game was when I went to university. Yeah. And just having that encouragement and that desire to, you know, go out and play, go out, you know, whatever that sport is, even if it wasn't the best at it, um, really, a lot of who I am is because of, is because of, I played sports. And I, I see it with my friends, you know, our friends who now have taken sports for the first time in university, and they're really struggling with the whole team dynamic, and the, the way their personality is very different from all, all my friends who played sports since they were a young age, because you just get you get, you get hammered into you the importance of certain aspects. And sharing. And, and sharing and the collective goal and, you know, 
be able to bounce back from you know being drilled five 0 one week and next week going and winning, you know that bounce back ability that that desire. And you've had to, to bounce back lately too. I mean, you 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 weren't playing great hockey just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, um, got got dropped from the team. wasn't having the best week. I was having the best time of it, but uh, it kind of you know bums you out. But it's it's I've I've done it for years. You know, I've, I've been a hockey player since as long as I can remember. And you're always been, rebounding. Somehow you always some you have to you have to bounce back because if you don't bounce back, then you're never that good to begin with. Yeah. So if you don't have that that desire. So it, it teaches inside, you resilience too. Oh, right? Massively, yeah. massively. Sports, sports, sports taught me my my biggest lessons. You know, there's 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 nothing about me that isn't hasn't been shaped by the fact that I play sports, and it's not just team sports. You look at people who play, you know, individual sports or swimmers. They're always the most like focused, most disciplined people in the world, and it is it's so important um, that you get your kids out there and playing. That's defense. great. What about girls, though? I mean, you know, but sometimes we kind of look at sport and we focus on on, boys, on just yeah. boys. And you know, what what do you what do you see? Like, you know, how can girls be encouraged to do more sport, or how, what what can be done? I think people need to realize that if you give your daughters the opportunity to play sports and you encourage them to play sports, it will do wonders for their confidence. Um, and that's you know, both boys and girls, confidence will come from sports. And um, understanding that they that it's. That's a great, you know, beyond just the usual health and all that stuff. It's a great thing to get everyone involved in sports, no matter boy, girl, um, whatever age you are. It, it, sports will be able to give you that mental um, boost, that confidence, that that desire to do better. Um, with girls, I think we're seeing Kenya, the football team here, the um, Humber Starlets. Mm -hmm. They're doing amazing. You know, they're they're winning week in week out nearly at this point. Um, I, uh, that's going to be good because now getting the next generation now going to have a great role models to look up to in terms of women's sports. So Nathan, you know, the this, this series is called Shaping African Conversations and what do you think, what would you say, you know, how could sport actually shape the African narrative? Well, I think when you look at the African narrative and how, you know, a lot of the West view Africa and probably even where some Africans view Africa, it's not necessarily in the best light all the time, but I think sports gives us the opportunity to shine a light on all the positive things that are coming out of the continent. Um, you know, the NBA also doing that, the Africa game every every year now. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. You go back and you show, like, hang on, these guys, you know, these they've, they've come from so far, but look what they're doing to improve them, improve their continent, improve their home. Um, so we get the opportunity to now um, look at our athletes who've gone abroad, be them in running or um, football, basketball, hockey, whatever and they get to go abroad and share their story of where they came from and who sport them, who got them to that point. Um, in, as Africa gets better and better, we get better at managing our sports and governing it and uh, we get better coaches and administrators and teams perform better, all it can do is improve the image of, of Africa. That's all, you know, Kenya at the Olympics, we go and win tons of gold. Everyone starts suddenly looking at Kenya like, oh, hang on, I've you know, maybe they've never heard of Kenya, and they start looking and saying, oh, hang it's on. It's true, people say, oh, Kenya, that's Kenya. how you have all the, go all the gold, 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 gold medals. You know, yeah. Everyone always cracks it, tells me, like, oh, you must be a long distance runner, you're Kenyan. They take one look at me and realize that's probably not true. <laughs> but it's just having that reputation abroad of, we have this talent, we have this skill, it, it's going to do wonders for our image. You know? um, we can go out there, share our stories, you know, share how we got here, and People start viewing Africa slightly differently. As, as, you know, maybe not. It's all, not always the poverty and the famine and all that. It's actually a, you know, a place that's where talent is is born and bred and nurtured and, and grown. And, that's and it just thing. makes you. I know, like every time you know, I spend time with with the NBA, the African players of the NBA. I think the one thing about them is that they're so proud to be African. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's such a great thing because you know, for years and years, people didn't didn't necessarily embrace being African. And I think what they really, really embrace being African and they love it. And they're taking on, you know, not just basketball players, football players, African athletes in general always tend to take on the African style wherever they go. Wherever they go, they've always got, you know, either the Kenyan bands or there's something, there's something there that reminds them, reminds everyone, like, hang on, I'm African and yeah. like, I'm here competing against your best and I'm coming, I'm coming from all the way from uh, Africa and I'm, and I'm showing you up. That's such an important thing is to, to have that. Well, that, that, that swag, that you know, that African swag, where you can go out there and be like, I am better than you. I, I can compete at your level and beyond you. And I've come all the way from there. You had all the advantages, but I'm still here in the same court, the same pitch as you. And that is such a powerful image. You know, you see, um, you see footballers all the time with you know, either their shin pads with their, with their, with their country colors, or they win the league, they put their country flag on. Yeah. And you're just showing that, like, that almost arrogance that you know, we've come so far and we're beating you, we're better than you. 
and suddenly we're all just like really proud to be African, right? Exactly. I think I'm like, going to the sort of the NBA African game and I just, you know, you go there and you just like, just feel like tears in your eyes because you're, you're African, yeah. just proudly African. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, thank you, Nathan. Thanks well, thank for coming. You me so on. glad that you're, <laughs> you're here for the holidays, and um, you know we'll be there for graduation soon. And you know Fingers we'll be following, <laughs> we'll be following your journey. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nathan Dinkayuki, and you're watching Shaping African Conversations.